Java Republic officially into the Irish market and uh, we had not one single account and about 10 years later we have about 20% of the market share. We essentially are as a coffee roasting company we bring in green coffee and we roast it through our hand painted and uh, roasting process here. We have a wholesale business which we supply restaurants, hotels, coffee houses and um, the licensed trade or pubs as we traditionally know them and we supply I think that's about 95% of our business. Outside of that we have a retail range of coffees that go into the consumer supermarkets. Coffee is at least 85% of our business, but tea has grown extraordinarily in the last uh, two years. We buy the other bean, hot chocolate. We buy in fair trade chocolate from, um, comes in from Ghana. And we also buy the sugar for the chocolates from Malawi. So we would have you know, a, a very strong range of, of ethically sourced coffees, teas, and chocolate. And we would um, also sell over the net. So we've got three parts of our business. The added business in the last couple of weeks to our business has been the coffee house. The importance of the coffee house is, is a showpiece. There's nothing more important to me in my life than coffee because I can travel to coffee producing countries. We can help as much as we can in terms of who we buy the coffee from. A lot of people believe coffee is a process, a manufactured process that for somehow we can use chemicals to make green coffee and maybe it's the instant coffee connection that that's where the, the association comes from. But I think there's completely misconception about how, how exploited the coffee world is and how harsh and how misunderstood it is to harvest coffee. And we still continue to, to give about 11% of net profits towards coffee communities. And we want to be, it, it's not we want to be seen, I think I want to be seen and I want to know that I've, and I think the people here who actually have travelled out to Origin want to feel that they've taken an amazing coffee from farmers who we actually believe and give them a fair price for their coffee and make sure that they have reasonable good standards of living, even though they're different continents we all live on, but that it is a, a, a fair price for a fantastic flavour that we actually make a certain amount of money compared to the level of income they can get out of the coffee. Well, what makes Java Republic different, I think it's, it's owner run. And the difference to us is we try and travel out there, we try and make sure that every single coffee is sourced from the families and the states that we know. And I think it's just my own belief in it and that is taken up by a management team here and a group of people and you know, there's about say 70 or 85 people who work in the company. I think they all believe, and particularly when you see what's going out in the producing countries, how different it is. And that belief in myself definitely has got into the company culture that we care where the coffee comes from and what price we pay for the coffee from. I've always intended to have an open roastery that the public can come in, have coffee and food, and they can actually see the whole roasting process. And it is taking the 15 years of dreaming and three years of absolute detail and design work with designers and trying to get this building together. So it has been a shocking amount of time and effort and focus from not just myself, the whole team of people here. We have a cupping room which we want to show how we train our um, customers when they buy our wholesale coffee that they can actually be trained to a standard that will do our brand proud and that will be absolutely influential in their customers buying the coffee and continuing to buy the coffee. We hope to have an international visitor centre and it's a small business but we hope that it will grow into um, huge, huge prospects for the future. The roaster behind me, it's the 60 kilo roaster we would roast, um, we're roasting presently, I think we did around 300 tonnes a year. So our capacity has increased from where it was three months ago. We bring in the highest quality grade one coffees around the world. We have a, uh, a 2,000 square foot uh, service department 
which we have a lot of workbenches and we have equipment is a vital part of our business and it's a vital part of our customers' business. If the equipment isn't clean and kept consistently maintained, they're going to have issues with their supply of, of, of their drinks. The future is we've still got a lot of organic growth in Ireland and we've made huge strides into the UK. I would love to get it into mainland Europe. Also, the big dream would be to have it into the States. We'd love to bring it to a retail level and there's huge potential for coffee houses. I think the way we roast coffee by hand roasting it, by the way we buy coffee in terms of our ethics, in terms of we don't mess with the coffee, we don't add water down to it, we date roast it, we have a lot of processes that we're very proud of and we won't compromise on our coffee. I think consumers around the world will actually understand that. And I think we have a great opportunity now with our new showrooms and our new showpiece to take it outside of Ireland. And I mean, when I say outside of Ireland, it could be, it could be one of those huge brands in the next 10 to 20 years. I don't think um, there's, we've, there's nothing now holding us back where we could take our brand.